uh, untested teams. Carnage is the first time they're coming to U.S. Quidditch Cup. Uh, Silicon Valley Vipers, they've been around a few years. This is their second outing. Uh, first outing back in 2016, I believe. Uh, did not do well there, so they're looking to do better. Silicon Valley, a record of 12 and 10 coming in. And Coughlin controlled by the Vipers. A couple of bludgers still loose. And trying to score early. There's some nice bludger play to keep the Vipers off the board here in the opening minute. Carnage on a tear back up the field. He's going to take the whole the team. tackle and score. Showing the athleticism there and able to go one-on-one -on -one to get it started. That was Ibli de la Rosa. What a mouthful. Graduated from Florida Gulf Coast. And again, looking for more. Vipers keeper passes over the top. That's Howard. Vipers with a kick to try and keep it alive. Carnage will recover. And De La Rosa the other way again. Pardon me, that's time. It's his teammate. And putting it home, that's number 23, Darius Housey. Also a very talented basketball player. And he dunked it home there. I think that seems to be Carnage's uh, plan right here. They want to get quick, athletic, fast breaks. If they can if they can break this open early, then uh, then hopefully they can stave it off and have their very hot seeker, uh, Tevin Foster. He's got hot hands, and he'll be able to finish it through for them. And that one off the rim of the hoop. Viper still not on the board. Bludger play right in front of the Vipers. Oops. Vipers have the quaffle. And able to score, had to go up over top to make it count, but Silicon Valley is on the board. So we continue to have some very windy conditions. Feels like we're in Chicago, but we are well, well south. And the wind is incredible out here. It's blowing the hoops down. You saw at the beginning of the game there, the referees had to hold on to the ball so they could actually stay on the starting line, not advantage one team. And Tevin Foster there. gets beat. Good defense by, by Silicon Valley to keep him on the outside. Tevin Foster, known for being one of the best seekers in the game. He's going to help try and lead Carnage to a victory here in their first match of the day. Blocked by De La Rosa. And that's his second block there. I think earlier uh, when it went off the rim, he also got a piece of that. Carnage showing big athleticism early. Now being patient, taking it up the pitch, just going to hand it off to De La Rosa. Uh, trying to avoid bludger play. A couple of nice bludger plays. Quaffle loose right in front of the Carnage hoops, and Carnage able to regain possession and beat. Howard wasn't fast enough the first time, but picks it up the second time, passes off, and putting it home. Number 52, Steven Cuevas. That was a good heads up play by Howard. He knew exactly where his receiver was, was able to spin out of the tackle, throw the ball up in the air and get it to him. Normally you throw it like that and you just you, you just lose the ball. A bit fortunate, but they'll take it. All even at 20, three and a half gone by. Silicon Valley holding on to bludgeon control for the majority of this game. They are running the, the uh, two male set. Carnage did come out and have that quick start, but it seems as though Silicon Valley has started to settle in as the Quaffle knocked out right in front of the hoops, able to fall on it. That was nice work. And Howard takes a second and catches breath as the uh, Vipers take a substitution. Vipers re-get control. Now on the pitch is Chris Lawton for Silicon Valley. Able to get rid of it. And Quaffle is going to go out of bounds. Turnover, carnage, possession. This wind is absolutely killer for downfield passes for Vipers. Uh, you got to put much less on it than you normally would. Otherwise, it's just going to go sailing like that. All even at 20 still. Carnage with possession. Able to bring some size onto the pitch. Looking for room on the long left. 
left side. Pass across just off the hands of Devin McCoy. Vipers on the tear. Scoring. Full speed ahead, and the Vipers have their first lead of the afternoon. Jimmy McDonald. That was a good pass opportunity there that Carnage had across the hoose, but didn't quite account for the win just off the hands of Devin McCoy, and Vipers able to capitalize. Now we'll see how Carnage responds just across midfield right now. With it is Jonathan Nettles. Nettles is a bulldozer kind of player. He's going to just try and power through, but it didn't really work for him. With his size, you've got to be able to see over the defense, get the spacing, get a good quality opportunity. I think he really thought he could split the defense there, and it just did not work. They just pincered him, and he lost it immediately. Carnage with possession. Trying to even this one up at 30 apiece. Good bludger play. Quaffle controlled by Silicon Valley. Good movement up the pitch. And coming up short on that one. Might have rushed that shot attempt. Yeah, they, they had the numbers down the field. Carnage was back on their heels. If they would have just taken one, one, beat, uh, one beat slower, I think they would have gotten that one. has the quaffle and given up to Nettles. Carnage making a lot of substitutions. Remember for those just joining us, 24 teams on the community division playing for a championship. Texas Cavalry the defending champs and loose in front. Bodies all over the pitch. Ledger play in there to try and break it up. Yeah, Silicon Valley has the quaffle. That I think was Alex Patel. Yeah, that was that was good good defense there by Silicon Valley. I think Carnage wants to pay attention when they when they uh, let their keeper get isolated like that. Nettles had an opportunity to pass off there, but if they continue to all run down the field and get him isolated one on one with the beater, that that's just fast break goals all day every day for uh, the Vipers. The wind starting to settle down for a moment. Patel out at midfield, looking for an opening, just nothing there. He avoids the bludger, tosses it over the hoop, but too high. He's looking for Alicia Bogart. Alicia Bogart, pardon me. For Bogart, this is her first season as the as a member of the Silicon Valley Vipers. Vipers maintaining bludger control. It was a little nebulous there for a sec, but now they have it. Pass inside to McCoy. He bobbles it, gets it back out. And scoring it. Wow. That one coming from range, but Jonathan Nettles puts it through. Into the wind. That's difficult. Not the first time we've seen that today, and a still very impressive shot given the conditions. Trying to be patient with the bludger play along the near side. And the takedown. Able to maintain bludger control. Now losing it. Tough one there for Richard Kermrein. through this match until we see the snitch. De La Rosa checking back in for Carnage at keeper. Vipers with bludger control down low. De La Rosa behind the hoops. His shot is good. What an angle. I mean, he really whipped that in there. Showing his versatility out there and the amount of ways he can contribute to this Carnage team.
Bludger play trying to get to Quaffle, it's knocked away. Great hands. Kelby Brooks, way to blow that play up, and now Carnage is down the field. And scoring credit, Michael Bernstein for knocking the Quaffle away, creating that opportunity for Carnage. As Carnage has now scored three straight. I think that was Curtis Ruin, uh, Rutens there. Howard, just a wild toss. Nothing was going for there. He just decided to throw that one away. And that'll be Carnage Ball. Right into the hands of De La Rosa. Carnage now with larger control, and so De La Rosa has a lot more room to operate. De La Rosa gives it up. Unable to make a clean catch on that pass. It's a turnover. Good bludger play right on top of it was Silicon Valley. Howard working with it, now gives it up. Bogart looking for room along the right side. Her pass. Nice deflection there, and that pass recognizing Bledger play was right there. Goldman loses the ball, and it'll go back to Carnage. And they'll take a second to uh, regroup. A couple of substitutions being made by Carnage. Here's Howard. Howard, one man in front of him, avoids the bludger and scores. Great heads up play by Howard there. He knew it was coming from behind him. He simultaneously dodged that bludger and kept De La Rosa in, at, a, at an advent, a disadvantageous angle and uh, got the goal there. Carnage maintaining bludger control now at Sammy Ludwig on the field. Teammate of mine during the summer. What did you enjoy most about playing with Sammy? She's fierce. She's tenacious. She will take every single hit and get right back up. De La Rosa keeping possession of the quaffle. And contact from behind. Silicon Valley forces a turnover. Yeah, he kind of just lost his footing there. Wasn't really sure what he was doing. Howard able to find a teammate before being taken down. And swatted away. Here's a great chance for Carnage. Picked up cleanly and scoring. That was Tevin Foster. My gosh, he just swatted that directly out of the air. Turning defense into offense. Carnage with a two-goal lead. Only about five minutes now till we see the snitch. Valley here to stay within striking distance, try and keep this a two goal game. Too high on that one. Tough to tell if that was a pass or a shot. There was an entire mess of people there down at the defense. I think Howard was just trying to do something. It just really wasn't working. Foster with a big hit. Taking down Dustin Polgar. And that created a turnover. Great job by Foster. Good opportunity here for Carnage to make this a three-goal lead. De La Rosa scores. And he was just leaping through the air there. Looks like he took out a Viper or two on his way to that goal. Seventy to forty, your score. We are scheduled to see Boom Train and the Bay Area Breakers next here on the U.S. Quidditch Cup live stream. Matt Dwyer with you right now. Polgar. Unable to get a good shot. Howard. Rolled he out was the outside. Oh, and that's why you always say elbow through the hoop. That's one he'd like to have back. We've got a player down for Carnage. I think that was just more out of frustration. He was diving for that ball to save it out of bounds. I think there was a, a missed beat there by a player. The referees will confer about it right now. That was 
was a good recovery there by Vipers on that last play. They were able to get the ball back up top into Howard's hands. He was able to drive in, but just rolled it right out the outside. Looks like that's a yellow card. Contact from behind. Set. And that's rough for Carnage because that beater foul leaves them down a beater for a minute or until the Vipers goal and it gives the Vipers bludger control. Unfortunately it does set the ball all the way back so Carnage at least has a second to get back into position before the Vipers are able to come right on the attack. Taken down to one knee there. Yeah, Rutens came in a little bit behind. He's got to be in the front plane of the player. And uh, Howard was just a little too far by, and Rutens should have just let him go and regrouped. And it looks like that's a, another yellow card there. And uh, now that is two players in the box for Carnage. That's not good. Let's see if Silicon Valley can take advantage. Absolutely. On, on the double power play here, like if you can't score, that's that's a frustration. That is an absolute frustration. Try and get this back to a one-two goal match. Howard's pass a little bit dangerous. Contact trying to make that catch. And the quaffle recovered by Carnage. Good hustle by De La Rosa, who's beaten from behind. Uh, that was a bad play by De La Rosa. Ooh, and that little hesitation move, scoring it, Steven Cuevas. They, and they had it there. They had it. They stopped the drive. They stopped the power play. All De La Rosa had to do was walk slowly and look for his passing options. Instead, he walked directly out of the keeper zone, got beat, and immediately lost the ball for uh, a Carnage goal. Or a, a Vipers goal, pardon me. Could have played it better. Now Carnage slowing things down a bit. De La Rosa with Cuevas right in front of him. De La Rosa... Cuts back inside, his shot deflected over top. Good defense in front. That Credit Kim Chris Lawton. Chris, Chris, Chris Lawton. Lawton. Chris Lawton, great block by them. Allows Howard to go coast to coast for the goal. And that's a stoppage in play there. We'll see what the referees have to say. Great block by Lawton. getting together, making sure they get this right. With all this win, it's got to be difficult to hear down there on the field. It's, it is, I know last year certainly, as I was playing last year, and hearing, an, uh, hearing officials on day one especially was incredibly difficult. Well, communication out there as players as well. Absolutely. There's pressure coming from behind. You're not always going to know. Uh, and it looks like a timeout has been taken. Score right now, 70 to 50. With a little over two minutes until we see the snitch. What do you think the game plan is right now? You're the Vipers, you realize you're coming, you're coming up on snitch on pitch play, you're down by two goals. How do they need to adjust? I think first you gotta come out, establish control of the quaffle, and try and slow things down because you're within striking distance. The last thing you want to do is afford a mistake here, get a couple of turnovers, and all of a sudden. You have Carnage building up their lead. Absolutely, I agree. I think uh, the Vipers have, have taken it all the way to the hoops, and then rather than taking a step back and resetting their offense, they try to force it anyways. It's a bad pass, and it either goes over or, or out of the hands of one of their players, and it has resulted in several Carnage goals. I think this could be an even game, or even Vipers in the lead had they not done that. Both teams 
back out into the pitch as we are ready to resume play. See the goal referees trying to keep the goals upright as much as they can. These wins knocking them down a bit. Rosa has the quaffle for Carnage. A three goal lead. Richard Crumrine with some good hustle there for Carnage and that, and that bludger is, uh, I think that's Carnage's, we'll see. Actually that may have gone all the way off pitch. That, uh, actually that might be a foul for Crumrine. The score right now should be 70 to 50 in favor of Carnage. Butcher's going back to the Vipers. No foul. I think he might have just kicked that one late. He was already beat. Well, a nice Bludger player right there in front of us. And Carnage is Bludgerless, meaning Vipers can capitalize here. De La Rose out of nowhere. Lloyd's being taken down. Can't score it, though. Quaffle loose behind the hoops, and De La Rosa, first one there. And this bulldozes the defender. And swatted away. No, no, no there from Jimmy McDonald. Sullivan was going to set up the pick for De La Rosa. He just decided to truck the defender himself. Seems to be a little bit of confusion about whose ball it actually is. Perhaps, uh, perhaps there was an injury or a little bit of blood there. That's usually why you get those mid-game substitutions. That brings on Alex Patel. A couple of bludgers loose. One rolls right over the cartage bench. Silicon Valley has the quaffle up top. Great stutter step there by David Campos. He waited for that bludger to come in, decided not to take the shot, and did a quick pump fake to score that one. We'll see if that goal stands. There was a bludger foul on the near side of the field. That's why the stoppage of play. like uh, no problems there and uh, Vipers will maintain control. Decided to sub a beater while Carnage came on on offense though, so that was a bold choice. And De La Rosa came up short. The follow-up attempt no good. De La Rosa one more time. This time puts it through. But now De La Rosa is being penalized before that shot, so it's not going to count. I think he got beat right in the middle of that melee there, otherwise it would have. That was a rough break there for McCoy. I think the hoof was just tipped by the keeper's arm, and that's why that shot missed. Bad handled pass there by Campos, and uh, looks like that'll be carnage ball. De La Rosa up the field on a tear. Pass back shot is no good. Sullivan and her shot is no good either. And that'll be Cuevas now in a keeper. This one could go either way right now. The snitch is on the pitch. And that's Tevin Foster in there for Carnage and Dan Howard in for Silicon Valley. Snitch directing traffic right now. And that was a nice Cuevas feed to Lawton for the goal. Ooh, nice work here on this snitch attempt. 
That's Tevin Foster going to work. Now has to back off a bit, avoids a couple of bludgers. Carnage season opening, just kidding. Bludgers coming in from the side. Now you've got Howard one-on-one -on -one with the stitch. And he's beaten. Both meters giving a lot of coverage to the seeker. As there's a bit of a pileup on the other side as they wrestle for quaffle control. And not a beater in sight. They're busy focused on the snitch, so that's going to be a pileup. Howard misses an opportunity there against the snitch. Now going to go try and go right back to work, trying to use his length. Viper's really locking down the seeker Ooh, game right now. Catch. This is the time that Howard has to take advantage of. It's one on one. Snitch goes down, and unfortunate there for Howard. High up, as you can see, there on the left for the quaffle. You're not taking that quaffle away. I know that from Cuevas. Yeah, they've really got a pilot there. It's kind of moments like this that I wish we had a jump ball of sorts. Carnage will sub, sub in uh, at least one new beater. Crumb Nine's looking a little tired. Maybe he should take a sub too. I don't know. But Silicon Valley still dominating the beater game as Howard is getting all the time in the world with the snitch. Foster's only gotten a few quick looks. Now this is Foster's opportunity. Oh, now Bludger play is going to prevent that. Foster looking for some help. Cuevas finally comes up with the quaffle there. I think he finally was able to wrest it away from uh, the other team. And now out there is the seeker. Alex Patel, oh, he almost gets it. He pulls the snitch shorts instead. That'll be a reset of the snitch. He was so close, he was getting sandwiched between the two seekers. Patel, right back to work, try to go over top. He's got that reach. He's got, my gosh, he's got such long arms. The snitch is pretty short, but it looks like he, he knows how to handle himself. Oh, near snitch catch again, but again got the shorts. And Patel is beaten. Ledger play there from Carnage. Foster gets a rare second. Meanwhile, Nettles back in, and while being tackled, oh, just misses his shot. See if Carnage can recover. The ball stripped away. Foster just clipped by the Bludger. Didn't get him by much, but just enough. Once again, another pileup. Oh, they really like this. Foster getting a bit of time. We've got whistles all over the pitch. Looks like there maybe was a catch, but the referees are calling it off. I think it was just a... a a uh, temporary whistle there, preliminary whistle. No snitch catch. Now this is very good for the quaffle game because after a stoppage, if there's a pileup, you have to stand back up. That's what Mass Mansfield would do here, have everyone stand back up. They're able to regrip the quaffle. down again. It's like a five-way tug of war. And Silicon Valley going to make a seeker change. Meanwhile, De La Rosa now in at beater. I guess they want their that athleticism for him uh, to, to work on that beater game so they can protect the snitch as much as possible, give Foster enough time. His partner, Sammy Ludwig. Kevin Lamb in there is the seeker now for Silicon Valley. Goes down. Was also beaten. 
game once again just turtling on the ground so luckily the snitch game is pretty exciting. De La Rosa avoids bludger play. Foster's got to go to work here. This is a chance now. He is beaten. Tony Zhang able to uh, save that uh, alone time, but Carnage comes back with control, and the another, Quaffles back up. We're going to have another new seeker for Silicon Valley. And beaten there. That's Campos. Backhanded pass by Cuevas goes wide as it was a shot. He was a little too impatient there. Snitch just backpedaling right now. So we remain in a tight game. Vipers with bludger control. And that's McCoy on the outside. He's going to run it hard. He does, ooh, nice spin move there. Oh, just over the top of the hoop, but eventually picked up and put in by his teammate. And that is uh, Mallory Cotter, I believe. That makes it a two goal lead for Carnage. That was some serious speed by McCoy on the outside. More bludger play right at mid-pitch. And that looks like Rooten now in for Carnage. Really trying for the height angle here. Almost gets it. Snitch able to reset. Shot blocked there by Jonathan Nettles, and Carnage comes back with the ball. Carnage also with Bludger control. And the wind takes that one wide. Rudin trying to go over top. Ooh, near snitch catch there. Coming from behind was Howard. Howard with the longest extension. He looked like Mr. Fantastic right there. Trying to lay out. Rudin. Meanwhile, Vipers. Catching Carnage unawares, and they're just going to roll that one in for an easy goal. Big bounding strides there by Jimmy McDonald now in for keeper. Tighten things up. It's all even at 90. 24 and a half minutes gone by. Kelby Awful Brooks. Loose. Oh, and it looks like Rudin has come up with a, with a catch. We'll see if this one's good. Using those big arms. Much debate there from the snitch going over. I think he knew it was a clean catch. As referees given Carnage for now. the victory. Yes, he has. Carnage starts the day with a victory, defeating the Silicon Valley Vipers. And their first trip to U.S. Quidditch Cup, they start off with a win. That's got to feel pretty good. Absolutely. So for Matt Dwyer, I'm Brad Nikki. Congratulations to Carnage on their first victory of U.S. Quidditch Cup 12. Stay with us here on the U.S. Quidditch Cup live stream.